time is right. No cloud in the sky. There's a little bit of Munich in there also, and a little bit of honey malt. Um, and um, just to add a little color and a little bit of, you know, depth to the beer. Um, so I also, and I also added a, a little bit of rice holes. Um, and I also, and an extra about third of a gallon of mash water just to keep everything fluid so I don't get a stuck mash. Um, and we're aiming at, for 150 for the mash. Um, so I had 151 and, uh, and I think that's pretty good to get a little, if it's real over is fine because I'm not going to put a blanket over it and it loses half a degree. It'll be right on the money, and 150, one degree high is not really too much of my opinion. Okay, so we're here on day 10, and you see I had to rig up the bottom of my gravity sample tube because um, because the, the base of it has a crack, so I had to kind of rig it with um, saran wrap and rubber bands to get a gravity sample. Um, so uh, it's, I don't know if you could see, but it's about 10, 12, 10, 13. Um, with the temperature correction, maybe in 10, 14, which is right about where I wanted it to. And the reason I'm taking it on day 10, um, and not like day 14 like I would normally is because, because the, as things settle out, it's been bubbling more than I, than I would expect it to. And I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't attenuating down too far. Um, so it's about 10, 12-ish now, 10, 13, um, which is perfect where I want it. So basically... I don't have to worry about attenuation. A lot of people have been telling me that Equinox has a green pepper note that they hate um, with a passion. Um, so let's go in for the aroma and see. But beyond appearance, obviously it's really cloudy and it's a very pale beer, which I assumed it would be because there wasn't really much specialty malts um, beyond, of course, the rye, the wheat, and the oats. There's definitely a green pepper note from the Equinox here. And then mixed in with that, there's some tropical fruits. Um, I don't smell any off flavors, but there's definitely a green pepper note from the Equinox. So let's try it. Cheers. So the taste is very dry. Um, a little bit of citrus. Some of that green pepper, but it's not too, I guess the green pepper is pretty strong, but not, not like, it doesn't turn me off as much as I thought it would. Zilla, I just want to. Uh, I wish you had smell-o-vision. This smells amazing. And 
it might be a little be a, ba a battle for all these three high alpha hap acid hops but I think the blend of the TNT and the Zaka and the Nuggetzilla is gonna be a winner I smell like like berries and pineapple and and grapefruit and like sweet sweet papaya oh it's gonna be awesome As you can see here, I don't know if the lighting is good enough, but the slight cold crashing that I did um, to bring it down from, let's say, like 67, 68 degrees to about 59 degrees or so really helped the beer clear out. It's really nice and clear. I know the lighting in here isn't great, but it's pretty darn clear, which is awesome, which, really, you know, which I'm really glad about um, so that I don't have to worry as much about you know this yeast which is known for taking a long time to settle out so so it's been dry hopping for a week like four and a half five days um at in the low 60s and then i've been slowly lowering it with like two and a half days or so so before i move it out of the fermentation chamber i just want to show you what it looks like on top so as you can see it's very has a lot of hop oils on top but all, most of the hot pellets themselves have already settled out. And at the bottom, you could see a lot of like the green um, pellets there. Oh. Hey guys, so we're here with the gravity sample. It's still pretty cold. So I put it in, and it's sitting about 10, 10, 10, 11. Um, so with the temperature correction, that should be lower because the, the hydrometer is calibrated for 60. Um, so if it's at 10.11 or 10.10, then it's either 10.10 or 10.09, I mean even 10.08. So um, definitely uh, by crashing it after me taking a little bit to the lower 60s after day 10 when I took the first sample, it definitely still fermented quite a bit. Um, uh, you know, lost a few points after that and then maybe another couple points in secondary. So. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my usual stone taster glass and give you a little review. You can see it's a nice really light west coast IPA color, um, like a really nice straw to yellow color. Um, the only color malts I put in here were like a quarter pound of honey malt and a little bit of crystal 20 so it's really not going to get any color really from the rye or the oats or any of the other base grains I use. It reminds me like of like a mix between like juicy citra and mosaic or galaxy. It has like peach and mango and great bitter grapefruit and it's pretty juicy. I wouldn't call it berries. It reminds me of my double IPA a little bit um, and that has like a bitter grapefruit mixed in with like peaches and, and mango. But it's very ripe. The fruit tastes pretty on the very right, right side. Again, I, didn't, I forgot to put the gypsum into this one, but um, the hops are definitely the star of the show here. So let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah, so that first sip was pretty bitter. It's only supposed to be like 78 to 80 IBUs, something like that, 78.6 IBUs. And at 1010, it's going to be about 7.7% alcohol. So pretty, pretty on the border of it being a double IPA even. But it's, it, that bitterness from the first sip faded right away after I got hit with the nice juicy, like, it's like a melony peach a little bit of a, a grapefruit bitterness that's what how I would describe it yeah it's like a west coast IPA mixed with a little bit more sweet 
peach and melon. That's what I, you know, that's basically. We're all pretty happy with it. It's a pretty good looking beer. And uh, once we get it carved, of course, I'll uh, give you another taste test. Cheers. Hey guys, so it's finally time for the wrap up for the new IPA, this grain to glass video, my first time doing one of these grain to glass videos. Um, so as you see here in this video that I'll overlay for the appearance, um, because I have been sipping it um, for a few minutes to gather my thoughts, it is pouring a nice pale straw color. It has a little bit of blush in its cheeks, so it's not, you know, totally, you know, yellow or clear or straw um, but definitely very pale like a west coast IPA um, and in, in with less light it has some nice orange to it but really you know, as you see um, it's very much a west coast very pale IPA um, so in the aroma um, it's a very unique fruitiness I think adding that TNT blend to kind of bring in more fruitiness mask the green pepper that I didn't like from the Equinox really did the job um, and really brought out the fruitiness of the beer in general um, so it's a definitely a fruitiness that I have never smelled um, and you know just because it was in the background when I first tasted it after when I dialed the you know the, the PSI down from 30 down to serving pressure so I kept it at 30 for three days and then dialed it down to 11 where I usually keep my beers um, it was you know, it smelled a lot. I was telling my friends, you know, on Facebook that, you know, it smelled a lot and tasted a lot like my double IPA, the hop, my hop stew or hop chillant. But the more I drink on it, the more it, it doesn't taste like that. It's a little more, it's not as like candied citrus fruits like that from the Eldorado hops that I added. It's more like a, you know, a very tropical, you know, beer with a lot of, nuanced grapefruit like grapefruit a little bit of pith in the finish a little bit of a sweet pink grapefruit mixed in with like the pineapple a little bit of mango definitely some like dry unripe papaya um, and it just for makes for a very unique beer and you know smelling the Nuggetzilla I was very happy for dry hopping as you saw I was very happy that it had some nice pineapple papaya notes and not as much resin as nugget has when even though regular nugget when you taste it when you smell it, I mean does have you know that American resiny citrus overall just to get into the flavor that unique hop flavor definitely resonates throughout the beer I think the when I was first tasting it oh, when I was first when I was first tasting it also um, it tasted like my double IPA um, but but now um, it's the the bot and also the body I felt you know was a little thin for a beer that I added wheat rye and oats to and shall I go a total of about two pounds um, of that of those grains all said and done I didn't have much body but now that I'm drinking on full glasses of it and the carbonation is kind of evened out um, the the creamy you know medium to full body and just the right amount of carbonation kind of you know kind of takes away a lot of the 79 IBUs and the 7.7% ABV um, and kind of just lets the hops shine um, without there being too much malt sweetness, too much bitterness, too much you know, any booze from the, from the alcohol content. And, you know, it's just dangerously drinkable. Uh, there's a bitterness that hits you right in front but it's not a harsh bitterness at all and it dries out just enough with each sip but then it finishes so smooth and doesn't leave that resiny poppiness at the back of the palate so you just want to keep drinking and drinking and drinking so I'm definitely really happy with this recipe of course next time I would use the TNT blend from the beginning instead of the Equinox and you know I guess I, I, when I brew it again then I'll see how that changes the game uh, because there won't be any Equinox in there. So we'll see how the yeast reacts, you know, from having the TNT blend in there instead. Uh, but overall, as you've seen, I'm very happy with the beer. 
and I definitely look forward to putting together more grain to glass videos for my beers, especially new recipes. Um, and in my next Homebrew Wednesday, um, which you'll see after this video, you'll see what beer I'm brewing next, and uh, it should be pretty exciting. So, cheers, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next special video. Thank you.